Now to get some reaction on the Department of Higher Education's briefing on NASFA. So we're now joined by the South African Students Congress Provincial Chair for Gauteng, uh, Yandisa Mhlelemban. And he joins us via our video link. Uh, Yandisa, thank you so much for your time this evening here in SABC News. I mean, we've finally uh, seen and heard the reasons uh, from the Higher Education Minister when it comes to why they took the decision to dissolve uh, the NASFA's board as SASCO. How do you respond? Yandisa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, Bali. Yes, I was saying that we've just heard uh, the reasons uh, from the minister today in that briefing in terms of why uh, they took the decision uh, to dissolve the NASFAS board. As Sasko, what is your response uh, uh, to uh, some of the reasons? I mean, uh, one of the reasons and the main reasons really uh, was that the board was unable to carry out its responsibilities. As Sasko, what do you have to say? Uh, thank you, Mali, for having me. Uh, evening to the viewers. I hope I'm audible. I'm not sure. You are perfectly the clear. Is cutting a bit. Okay. No, no. We 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 do welcome the dissolution of the board. I mean, the board had huge weaknesses and failures. It was incoherent. Many strategic positions they were failing to fill those vacancies. I mean, they had an acting chair. You had an acting COO, CIO, COO. Those to us <clears throat> are indicators that the board was failing to deliver in its mandate and was unable to deliver to the working child and the poor. So we do welcome the dissolution of the board. Although we believe that the minister is trying to water down the situation, the issues at the, at the scheme are deeper than the dissolution of the board. Mm. And when you say that they are deeper than the dissolution of the board, I mean, uh, looking at some of the protests uh, which have taken place, especially uh, by student formations uh, like yourselves, I mean, you had continuously called for those f four fintech companies uh, to be removed and should not be responsible for the disbursement of those allowances. So what exactly do you mean that it's deeper than what we are seeing from the minister? Okay, just a quick background, if you can allow me. <clears throat> the direct payment has been a policy proposition of the South African Student Congress Organization. Why did we advocate for that policy proposition? Uh, it is because institutions have been found to be corrupt and fraudulent. I mean, just yesterday, the SIU recovered over 300 million from the University of Johannesburg and over 400 million from the University of Pretoria. Mine is meant to fund the poor and the working class. Mine is that were taken from university, from, from, from the NFSA scheme, hidden uh, to boost the university reserves. Now, we had advocated that the process of payment to students and the accreditation process of accommodation must be taken away from universities, given to, 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 to government for accountability and transparency because there are limitations in holding universities accountable because of the so-called institutional autonomy. Now, what universities have done, because they realize that they are going to lose a lot of money and we're the cash 22. What we have never picked up was that what we're fighting for is this so-called direct payment. It is only a fight of who has the prerogative to appoint the service provider. I mean, we're trying to get rid of a middleman. The minister and the board were still bringing us a middleman that was corrupt, incoherent, failing to give students their allowances. The four fintech companies, I mean, the investment report, the investigation had recommendations that these four fintech companies were irregularly appointed. They found that the CEO had relationship with, the, with, with these companies. So we believe that the process even for these four fintech companies to disperse these allowances was fraudulent. Mm. And do you still maintain uh, that uh, you, know, you want uh, these allowances to be distributed uh, through a government department? And I recall uh, some of your fellow students saying that how SASA is conducted should be the way that students are, are, are actually given their allowances. Exactly. We are saying that let us fix, let us fix the mess at the post bank. Let us 
facilitate the process of a state-owned bank for the state to be able to deliver services to its people, to cut the middlemen, cut the tender process, it is expensive. Mm. Another issue was that, uh, you know, some of these allowances were not reaching students uh, on time. And now that we find ourselves here and listening to uh, that briefing, uh, we're now told uh, that uh, those allowances uh, which are due to students will not be interrupted. Do you trust that, uh, Sasko? Well, well I, I, I do think that the money will be dispersed to students. I think let us trust the minister with this one, uh, because he, had, he has promised us that process will go back to its historic way of doing things. We trust that Pundi and other service providers that have never had glitches in dispersing allowances, even if the minister can take the process back to banks, uh, your Capitec, APSA, and so on and so forth, to give us the money of students would appreciate that. Mm. Because we have a couple of suicides in the University of Johannesburg due to these glitches. We have a lot of students in different colleges that have sick asylum to neighboring hostels because of the problems that have been caused by NFSAS. But mm. NFSAS is not only to be blamed. Universities have been playing hide and seek because they have not they have been against this radical policy position and the implementation of what the minister has implemented. They have, wrong, they have sent the wrong data to NFSAS, therefore wrong, uh, 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 wrongfully funding students that were not deserving. So it's just it's, it's, it's not I'm not in, in exoneration of the mess that is in the higher education sector. Mm. And now that you find yourselves here and, uh, you know, there is a new administrator for NASFIS, uh, will you be reaching out uh, to uh, the new administrator, especially to look into a lasting solution uh, for, for students to ensure that those students uh, can get access to their allowances as stipulated and on time? What well, actually say the National Executive Committee must send a delegation to meet with the new administrator. The new administrator must tell us how are they going to quickly, speedily resolve the matter. All right, uh, Yandisa, thank you so much uh, for your time uh, this evening here in SABC News. That is uh, Yandisa Mtlelembana. He is the Gauteng Provincial Chair for the South African Student uh, Congress.